everyone welcome to um, Sunday live stream um, this is I'll be sewing and my name is Gina and I'm here from Brampton Ontario I'm at the store right now uh, to the ones that are right now watching uh, welcome and um, we're gonna start I'm gonna show you the project that we're gonna do today uh, for my Canadian friends they are celebrating Thanksgiving happy Thanksgiving and um, for all the other ones, I'm sure every part of the world sometimes have different dates. Um, so whenever is yours, we'll uh, we'll try to see if we can remember all the different ones that that from you guys. And you guys can even tell us on the comments when is your Thanksgiving. Uh, so for this week, I decided that uh, last week we made this bag. You guys probably remember. Um, I have. Um, I've used the line of fabrics Chloe. That was this one here. Just to kind of bring you. And I attached the straps here. I showed you guys how to do this one. So this week we're going to go through this bag also. But this one is slightly different. I just want to teach you guys how you, you guys can deviate from one project and then create something completely different. And that's very useful. So a C is this one. That's the one we created last week. So. This one is pretty much very similar. The only difference is that when you open it, I have a shopping bag. And there's my flap. And that's my shopping bag. So if I go somewhere and I only have my little bag and out of the blue I need an extra bag, I can just open it and I have this really big shopping bag that I can use for do my shopping if you go to you know craft shows or any other place that you want to use a, a bigger bag then you have that and you also still have this one here with the flap you can keep your wallet and you know all your stuff in there and uh, that's the way it looks like so we're going to go through the steps of creating this bag um, this one also because you have the strap you have the option of taking it off and putting it away inside of the smaller bag or you can definitely use it like this. Let's see if I, sometimes in the camera is a little hard. As you see, this sits like that. You can also, if you have a scarf or a jacket, something that you want to put in between here, you can also do that and have it sitting there. So you can leave the straps like that. Or you can even add snaps and snap them here and use those with the other ones that I have here. As you see here on mine, I use, you know, the, my rivets, but Again, this is all stuff hardware, it's all optional. You guys can definitely just sew it in and keep it simple. Um, sometimes I do that. This line of fabric, um, I've used this side. This is what it looks like. It's a panel, it was actually a panel that I used. This panel is from Northcott. It looks like this. And it's called One Stitch in Time. And it's right now it's on the website that's what the panel looks like it's really pretty and if you love like sewing teams this is a really good one that you can definitely either do a quilt or you can do a bag or other things there's so many things you can do with panels just use your imagination okay so I'm gonna put this one to the side and today I'm still gonna use the line that we used last week Chloe because I really like that line to create my new bag and what I'm going to be using, I'm actually also going to be using a panel. And the panel that I'm using is this one here. So it's really cute. So I'm just going to take two pieces from here. The other parts I'm probably going to use for some, some other project. Um, so I'm going to use just the, these two here to create my front and back. And um, we're going to go through the measurements now and see all the pieces that you need. Okay, let's put this to the side. So how is everyone doing today? Everybody okay? Have you, have you done all your sewing projects? Did you start Christmas shopping? So let's start here. So I have here all my fabrics that I'm going to be needing. And uh, we're going to start with um, the little bag that I have here. The one that I'm going to actually fold I can fold this in and slide it back in there. Let's see if I can show you. So I would go fold my... Question? Yes? 
from Francine. Do you have both panels in your store? Yes, far? yes, they are in the store and also on the website. Um, so, so we're gonna go like that, and as you see, I go here. I open this strap, this fold. I push that part in. Of course, I'm gonna leave this strap. Oh, sorry. This strap from the little bag has to stay up and I was putting it in. So you go like that, you fold a little bit and then you just slide it in. And then of course, it has another flap here that's gonna finish your bag and then you have it. Okay, so for this little bag, of course I changed the measurements. Uh, last week we used something that was nine by I think 56. I don't. I don't remember exactly, I think it was 56. Um, today we're gonna use different measurements for this small little bag. So I have, let me put my bigger bag here to the side first. So I have here for my little bag, uh, so I have two pieces of fabric and I wrote the measurements here. So it's 24 and a half by 10. So I increased slightly a little bit this way and I made it slightly shorter. And um, so this would be my lining, 24 and a half by 10. That's what the fabric I picked. And for my outside of my bag, I picked this pink. And what I did was um, I wanted to have a flap, of course, to um, just to look different. And what I did is I cut my piece here six and a half and then I added um, I added if let me see let me check what was this part here um, about 19 and a half inches just to make my uh, 24 and a half so you add that if you make this slightly longer and then you do your flap and then you can always cut your lining at 24 and a half and then make sure that this one just trim it down to the right size you can also do that so there's no mistakes and what else I did here is I interface both of them with SF 101. It's a cotton interfacing from, uh, um, from, let me see if I get a little piece of paper so I can show you what, what it look like. Let's see. Let me have a look. I'll show you what it looks like. So some of you sometimes ask me, you guys don't know what it looks like. So I want to show you. So it's a Pellon product and um, it's SF101. I don't know if you can see the number here. So it's fusible to one side. And so you can fuse it to both sides of one for the lining, one for your back, for your outside fabric. Okay, so I have my two pieces here. Then I'm gonna need a strap. I already went ahead and sewed the strap, but you guys know how to do a strap. You can do either adjustable or just one size. In my case here, I only did one long one. And I believe mine is the 40, about 45 inches. And I cut uh, wide, I cut four inches. And then I did like we normally do straps, fold to the middle and uh, me see if I show you in a piece of fabric here so the straps when I do my straps is I I cut my four inches this was four inches wide and what I did is I fold it to the middle and fold it to the middle and to the middle again and fold it this way all right then I went ahead open it fold the little edge and fold it again like that and like that and like that again in both ends and I pressed it really well and then I sew it okay so that's how I did the strap so mine is already done also uh, you're gonna need uh, some hardware or you can attach the strap directly into your bag if you're gonna use hardware I have here two clips um, and also if you use hardware, you're going to need some 2D rings. And the D rings that I have, if you're wondering about the size, they're about one inch wide. Okay, so from here to here, about one inch. 
So, and the same thing with these pieces that I did, I did exactly what I showed you here. I cut two pieces. It was about five inches by um, four inches. And I did the same thing, fold it, fold it, fold it, fold my edges in, and then fold it in half, and then I sewed it, okay, for these two pieces. So those are done. So with this part here, now what we're gonna do, as you see, this is my old side. So I'm gonna go ahead and join this, just like we did last week. If you were watching last week live, we sewed these together here and um, and at least so we can complete that little bag so I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of sew it quickly and I'm using about a half an inch seam allowance here so in case you're wondering what I'm using if you want it to attach pockets as I mentioned last week you can definitely attach it now you can Figure out exactly where you want it, what do you want the pockets to be, and you can attach it. Okay, so I have this like this. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I would press this on the iron. I don't have my iron here, so I'm just gonna press it with my fingers, maybe even like open my seam slightly and then press it and I'm gonna do a top stitch here let's see so is, did any of you made the bag that we did last week is anybody done any all right we're gonna go here I'm gonna move my needle position to the edge of my fabric and I'm gonna increase my stitch length to about 3.5 as I'm doing a top stitch and I'm just gonna sew that across and I want to make sure, since I didn't press it, that my fabrics are straight. But I would definitely, if I were you, just, just iron it and it will be a lot easier for you to sew the stop stitch. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and sew that there. Alright, that's done. So, now I'm going to do the whole process that we did last time. So I'm going to bring my fabric here again if you want to sew um, a pocket you can add it here so you can add the pocket here or uh, even on the outside you know like this is going to be my outside of my bag because I know this is my flap I can also attach it here right I can also attach it here my bar the, the pocket right so So I'm going to go ahead and do the folds like we did last time, bring that there to my flap, just measuring the flap and fold them even. And we're going to do exactly as we did last week. So if you have any doubts, just go back to the video and, uh, and do that. I'm just now, right now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to round this one up. I'm not going to do it square like we did last time so I'm just gonna go ahead and round these corners slightly I'm just gonna do an eye it but if you have something round like a ruler tape or something you can put on those corners and then use that to round your corners I'm just gonna go here with the scissors and do it like this but definitely you can uh, go ahead and use something to mark these and uh, round them up if you want you can even leave it square right so I'm gonna go ahead like last week we did we uh, gonna bring that there and go here so as you remember we the lining our lining is gonna be this color here 
this color here so I'm gonna leave an opening in my lining so I'm just gonna sew a little piece And I'm going to change the needle position to one inch. Leave an opening in one of the sides of the lining so we can turn it inside out. Let me bring the machine slightly closer. So this side we sew halfway up. Halfway up. My outside fabric I'm gonna go ahead and do halfway up. My other side halfway up. Oh, and my machine didn't sew anything. All right. Let's try this again. I'm gonna do my corners here so I'm gonna do just a tiny tiny little corner uh, about I would say half an inch That's, Question. yes uh, what is the name of this pattern is it, is it available to purchase no it's only on video unfortunately I don't have time to write those patterns because they are very time-consuming and um, you need to uh, really, uh, and then you have to test it, make sure everything works perfectly. It's a lot of work to do a patterns, right pattern. So I normally don't have that time. So I suggest you guys just pay attention and write your measurements. And I'm sure you'll be able to do it, no problem. So I'm going to cut that corner. And that corner. All right, I'm going to do this side. I'm going to use the one that I already cut. And you remember, it's, I measure was from the seam allowance in a half, uh, half an inch and from my fold up a half an inch. So we're going to do that again here. I'm just going to use this as a template. I think before I mentioned to you guys that you guys can do a little template on paper and then just use that to cut your corners. You can also do that. In this case, I'm just using one. So it just saves you time. Okay. So who is out there today? Any names? Anything that you... Adam? Me, me. <laughs> Lots eh? of people. <laughs> eh? Lots of people. <laughs> Any names that I recognize? And Mary. Hi, yeah. Ann. Hi, Mary. Who else? Who else is uh, there? Carrie. Carrie. Hi, Carrie. Francine. Francine. Hi, Francine. Anyone that um, have made one of these bags from last week? There was a couple of people when you asked last week. Yeah? Oh, you didn't say anything. I didn't know. So was it easy to make the bag? The reason that I'm doing this is because sometimes you already have projects, like even patterns, that you can use and turn it into something else. It's just really to adapt what you already know and uh, make something else, right? So that's why I'm doing this one and show you that from one, you can make something else. You know, I think this type of pattern, I think I already did sunglasses. The computer bag was based on this. Um, 
the double bag that we did was also based on this technique. Um, so just giving you the ideas how you can adapt things and keep changing them into other things. You know, it's just changing measurements. Bag making is really just measurements and just putting the pieces together. It's like working in a puzzle. So I'm sewing all my corners right now. All right. So as you remember last time, after my corners were sewed, I went ahead and I sew this all the way around to where I end up with my other seam. I know I'm doing it on white, so it probably is very hard to see. Maybe I should have used a different color so you guys could see better. But this is my half where I sew up. So now I need to close this up all the way around my, my side. So I'm gonna go ahead here. And I have a pin. I have this rule never to sew over pins, but the odd time, you know, because your needle might break. So you don't want to do that. I know the machine can be slightly loud. So hopefully you guys are hearing okay. And I have my son there answering some of your questions. He's probably not even telling me about. No questions. No questions. No one has any questions. So far, so good, right? So far, it's an easy project, right? Okay, and this bag is done. I'm just going to turn it to the right side. I look for my opening. And we really finish this bag. Let's see. Just straighten these corners. So let's talk about corners, you know. So how do you determine it how big you want your corner? So you have to think that when you cut, for example, we cut a half an inch uh, and I'm sewing as a half an inch. So my corner is going to end up about two inches. Okay, because I have uh, half on this side, half on that side, plus my seam allowance. So it's going to end up about two inches. So any bag will work the same way. So if you want a bottom that will be, let's say four inches, you would cut one inch, one and a half inch, one and a half inch. And by the time you sew your half an inch, you end up with a four inch bottom. So let's see. Okay, so this one is done. Just gonna turn it to this side now. Oh. Okay, so so I didn't sew my my pink fabric here didn't got sewed. So I gotta go back here and sew this little piece here that didn't got sewed together. So I'll go ahead and sew that part there that I missed. This was because of the seam allowance, the seam allowance, the opening. Okay. But it's okay. It's no big deal. It happens sometimes that we, we, you know, make a few mistakes here and there. There's no big deal. We can always go back and fix it. So, and this is the bag. All right. So, need a top stitch on this. Of course, we're gonna press this first, and I'm gonna put a magnetic snap through the opening that I left in there. And that little bag is like this. So we're gonna go back now to the other bag and we'll see what we have to do next. So if you see on this bag, when I opening, I have this big bag. I lined mine, I did two fabrics. So it's up to you, it's optional. You can do just one, one fabric but I find they're a little bit stronger if you use two fabrics. 
So what I have here for my for this bag here, and of course, there's another flap here. So if you see on this, I have a flap here and a flap here. We're gonna need those two, just two, so when you actually use it this way, you also have a flap here. Otherwise, you end up with nothing here. You would end up with just something like that. Okay, because if you see, this is it, like that. Okay, I'm gonna put that one for the side and we're gonna work on this bigger bag. The measurements for this bigger bag that I've used doesn't mean you can use something else. You can you, you can definitely make whatever size you want. But what I have here, I picked these colors. And I have, as you see, I cut my panel, cut these two pieces of the, the panel, and I add strips to the side. So my size that I have here, that I want my bag to be, I wrote it here, the measurements, they are... 17 by 18 and a half so I have 18 and a half this way and 17 this way so the height is 17 this way is 18 and a half okay and I have front back and two linings. So I'm gonna go ahead and join my front and back and I'm gonna bring the sewing machine and I'm gonna sew it all the way around. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that really quickly. I'm sure you guys don't have any problems doing that. This is a simple process. Half an inch seam allowance and fortunately I can fast forward this as we're live. Of course, when we do a, like a video in general, we normally we would either eliminate this part so you don't have to see it, or you can, um, so it speeds up things a little bit. Unfortunately, when you do a live stream, then you have to do a few things here so you guys understand. Okay, so you're gonna go ahead and sew that right across, right around. Just leave the top open. And we're going to also do the same thing with our lining, with the, ch the, the only change from the lining, we're going to have to leave an opening in the bottom, okay? So you guys do that. I want to show you a little something here on this bag, because a lot of you sometimes tell me you guys don't like the lining when the lining is loose from your bag. So I'm going to show you how you're going to actually do to your bag so your lining is not loose. So, and this one is almost done. All right. Another thing that I would like to mention to you is, see, and my machine didn't sew, I ran out of thread? No. No, still have thread. I don't know, my machine is acting up today. Maybe she doesn't want me to sew. So how long have you guys been sewing? Are, are you guys beginners or, you know, what do you like to sew in general? Bags, quilts, table runners? What is your favorite project? All right. So this bag, I'm gonna do corners, but if you want, you can leave it like this. You can just leave it square, all right? You can also leave this bag square. I'm gonna do corners here, but you can, that's an option, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and sew my lining. Right sides and right sides. What's going on here? Upside down, my fabric. Okay, it's like this. One of so the right sides, just in case. Okay, so go ahead. I'm gonna. I don't have any thread in my bobbin. Let me grab another bobbin. 
Let me see. I had one here already done. Okay. Speed up things. And so just to answer your question before about uh, favorite projects. Robin says she loves your bags, and Judy says she likes quote bags uh, and quoted throw. And someone else says that they've been sewing for over 25 years and wow. started in junior high school. That's a long time. Must have made a lot of projects over those years. Do you guys have any tips that you guys would like to share with us? Anything that you know that you know it works and would like to share with other people because sewing is really all about sharing and you know um, show your ideas and so everybody else can do it I know some people don't like anyone doing their stuff or sharing anything but I think sewing should be all about sharing you know so we can pass it down so other people can do it when we're we can't do it anymore Because it's all about a learning, and if no one wants to share, then that means along the lines, no one is going to know how to do it. All right. So, so I'm leaving here open about four inches. All right. And this one is almost done. So this is not a, a complicated project. I think the most time that it takes is cutting all your pieces. And, um, and then sometimes picking the fabrics, deciding which fabrics to use. Uh, you know, here in the store, I have most of my customers, uh, they tell me all the time, oh, I just don't know what to use. So it's really sometimes it's the hardest time is deciding what am I gonna use? And or sometimes we see a, a beautiful fabric, we don't know what to do with it. Like special panels, I find a lot of people have a lot of problems with panels, not knowing what to do with them. Okay, so I, I also sew my lining. Now I need to do my corners on my lining. So I'm going to do one inch corners. Okay, so I'm going to get my ruler and I'm going to mark one inch from my seam allowance up and from my seam allowance in. So let me see here so you guys can see a little bit better. So from here in, from my seam allowance one inch and from here up one inch. I want just small corners, I don't want nothing big. Let me see where I put my marking pen and my, my big chaos here in my table. <laughs> just to go back to your original question about like how long they've been sewing and um, like their favorite projects and stuff. Um, so Wanda says, although I've learned this just so in school and made my clothes for years once I went to work I didn't have time now that I'm retired I started sewing again love making bags this year uh, another person says that they've like they've sewed for two and a half years uh, someone had said like five years or something somewhere in here I think. yes I think so I have my one inch here Yes, some of you have been sewing for a long time. I, I also start sewing, I learned to sew when I was 11. Um, I did stop for a few years also. When my kids were small, I used to do a lot of knitting and crochet and um, believe it or not, I even did cake decorating. <laughs> so, uh, but sewing was always one of the things I always enjoyed. Um, and uh, if you, my, my customers ask me, does your family sew? And that's no. And none of my, my uh, sisters sew. It was just me. I'm the only one that actually sews. So I'm doing also in my bag here, I'm going to do one inch. Again, you can leave it square. You don't have to do this part if you don't want to. It's just options. I mean... And I'm going to be using the one that I already marked for my other fabric. I'm going to line up my uh, seam allowance here and line up my seam allowance in the bottom and use that as my template. And I'm just going to go ahead and cut it. Okay. Uh, question from 
Francine. Yes. Uh, Gina, maybe you answered this before, but I'm curious. Are you sewing and filming in your store, or do you have a craft room in your home? No, I'm actually sewing it in the store. So I have to really, uh, you know, to, to record, I gotta, you know, jiggle things around here a bit. So, <laughs> so we can set up the camera and, you know, and the proper lights for you guys to be able to see it. Um, don't have room in my house to have a sewing studio, so I do most of my sewing here. You know, maybe one day, maybe when I retired. So I'm going to go ahead and match my, uh, my uh, seams here in the middle, and I'm going to go ahead and sew it. If you have a hard time doing this, put some pins, okay? So at least you know your fabric is not going to move when you take it to the sewing machine, all right? So it's always... A half an inch, that's what I'm using. So let's... And here, when we sew this part here, you see I fold one uh, seam to one side and one seam to the other side to eliminate the bulk. And on this side here, since this one was already fold it to this side. I want to fold this one exactly to the same side. Uh, there's a comment. Yeah. Uh, back to your your question about uh, tips. Um, they said, one of the best tips came from you, Gina. When leaving a gap, you sew an L shape to down towards the edge of the bag. Yeah, I always like that one because when you turn things to the right side, they already fold all uh, fold in, so y you don't struggle as much to fold that fabric in. Don't exactly remember where I learned that one. Um, I guess you know sometimes you go to I don't know if any of you take classes or anything like that. Over the years, you know I would sometimes take a class here, class there. Just sometimes not so much for the project to itself, but it, it's nice to be with other people that enjoy the same stuff that you do. And uh, so I would take classes. You know, I might have picked up somewhere that tip. Can't guarantee that. I'm sure I'm not the, the first one to come up with that. I'm sure there's a lot of people that use that tip. Going back to your original question about um, how long they've been sewing for, Anne says, I started in seventh grade, made clothes for myself and daughters, and now for my adult granddaughter. I'm now 73 years old. Clothing, you see. Who was it that asks? Anne. Anne, do you, uh, do you still doing mostly clothes or now you do other projects? Okay. So. So my bags all the way around, did my corners. They're done like that. So now it's the question, what do you want to do? On this bag here, let me see, let me put this one away because the fabrics get mixed up and we don't even see what we're doing. Um, and this one here, as you see, I sewed, I sewed my straps after I finished my bag. Here, you can definitely go ahead and mark where you want your straps. I normally go about mark the middle and I go about three inches each direction and then sew my straps there. You can definitely mark it and sew your straps here. And the straps that I have here, I didn't do mine too long, but you can do whatever length you want, whatever works for you. Doesn't have my, to be mine. Mine here are about 25 inches long, the straps that I have here. So when I have two, I already did. So what I did is I cut six inches. And I did exactly what I told you guys before. You six inches, fold it in half, fold one side to the middle, the other side to the middle, and fold it again. And then, like we did here, it was six inches, middle, half there, there, fold your edges there, do that, and did that. What, and something else that I also add to the strap, just to be slightly thicker I add one strip of SF 101 I don't want them too thick because they they have to fit in my bag in my small bag but I didn't want them too floppy either so I just added one little piece of interfacing in the middle of my strap 
just to make it slightly thicker. All right, so we're gonna put that like that. I am, however, I'm not gonna sew my straps in. If I needed to sew them in, what I would do, I would, let me put this to the side. I would measure where I want them. I would put them in like this. See? Okay, just a couple of um, comments. Yeah. Um, I've been sewing for 50 years, started as a child with my mother. I'm a home economic teacher, so I teach now. Um, Anne replied to your question about the clothes. She said, not clothes now, but quilts and bags. I also sew quilts for my great-grandson. Oh, very nice. So now I would um, make sure you check your straps, make sure they are... They going the right direction you don't want to set them wrong and you would put your lining right sides to right sides and bring it in together and sew your two straps in but I'm, I'm gonna sew mine on top like I did before so I'm gonna put my straps to the side and I'm gonna complete my bag here so I'm gonna put right sides another thing that I would like to uh, that I'd like to share with you guys is I always cut my lining of my bags about half an inch shorter from the bottom because sometimes I find there's too much bulk on the inside so I always cut about a half an inch shorter and then I sew it because I like it that way better I think it fits nicer uh, but it's optional I mean you can do whatever you think works better for you my way is not the only way there's tons of ways out there so I'm gonna match my seams here and I'm gonna sew my back all the way around And if we take this, will be easier out. And I'm just gonna put a couple pins here. So just another comment. Yeah. Um, Jacqueline says that she's been sewing for four years and she's learned so much from you. Um, Lori said that she was able to start her own business by watching you and others. Um, When my another person says when their children were small that they sewed their all their clothes. Uh, uh, and Francine apparently missed your response about the store or craft room thing. If you just want to repeat that. So no, I don't have a, a craft room at the house. I normally sew here all in the store. Um, we jiggle a little bit. We have to move a few things around just to make it work. Um, so after I've done my video, the store sometimes is a bit of a mess because I have to put everything back. Uh, so normally um, I like to record after hours so I have time afterwards to tidy up a little bit before I have any customers. Like tonight, for example, tomorrow here is Thanksgiving, so it's a holiday. Uh, most everything is closed, so I have time tomorrow to tidy up the store. Um, but yeah, I, I sew almost everything here in the store, even my own, anything that I need to make, it's always sewed here. And just another question from Francine. Yeah. How many bags can I make per panel? I want to make the same as your first day bag. The first bag, I've used actually two panels, but you don't have to, you can use one bag per panel if you use see I've used part of one panel here and I've used the same one here because I want to repeat the pattern right but you don't have to the one that you have the little bag on top you don't really see the sewing machine so you could definitely put a different fabric here from the same team like sewing team or something that also would work so then you would save on the panels but sometimes panels is just like buying fabric, really. So uh, you're going to have to fussy cut the, what you want on the on your fabric to, to have that in the middle. Um, so that's what I did on this one. You know, a lot of people sometimes think, oh, panels, I don't want to cut it out. But, you know, why not? I mean, we cut out fabric. We fussy cut fabrics for other things. We can cut, fussy cut the panel and, you know, match what we need, right?
Okay, so my bag is done. So I'm going to flip it to the right side before I turn it, before I turn it. Forgot to tell you this. Remember that I was mentioned to you that I want to tell you something about sometimes some of you tell me, oh, I don't like the bags that have the lining. We go grab something and the lining comes with it. So I'm going to show you how you can eliminate that. So I saw my top and my bottom of my bag. So I have something like this now. So I took it out like that. This was the middle when I was sewing around. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to bring my corner, this corner here on this side and to this corner of this side and I'm going to put them together and I'm going to go ahead and sew it bring the sewing machine and I'm going to sew those two corners together so it eliminates all of that you wanting all right so I have now that one sewed to that so I'm going to get, this looks weird Question. when you're doing this. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, hi, this is a wonderful project. Where can I purchase the panels? Uh, the panels are on the website uh, and here in the store. You can definitely go to the website. We will put a link on the description of the video. And you guys can go and uh, get your panels. Okay, so, and then again, this is my other side that I had here open, like that. So I have my corner, my other corner. I'm going to go ahead and put them together like that and I'm going to go ahead and sew it across and I can use one of the seams that I already have there as my seam uh, guide okay I'm going to go ahead and do that Yes. Do you design the projects you show? They are so creative and beautiful. Everything I make, I make it up. Uh, if it is something that I'm going to work with somebody else's pattern, I would tell you. I don't, um, you get inspired from other things that you see and everywhere. So I always try to uh, come up with my own ideas and, you know, and sometimes they just come to you like, you know, you're working on something and out of the blue, you fold it a different way and you realize, oh, wait a minute, I could make this. So uh, that's how normally I create my pattern. So now you end up with something like this that looks like this. So because now you add this corner here and this corner here, they're sewed together. So I'm going to go ahead through my opening and I'm going to bring everything back. And it looks a little weird. I know it does, but it will eliminate all that. Your lining coming up because now your lining is attached to the bottom of your outside fabric. See this corner here has all the four pieces and this one also like that all right the bag is done you're gonna press it and do a top stitch I probably wouldn't do a few of the steps here on camera because so we don't make the video extremely long I'm just gonna show you the process and some parts I'm gonna just leave it with pins because I do have that one bag there that you can definitely see what it looks like. So I don't think we have the need of, um, of doing certain steps. So this part is done. This bag is done. Okay, now we need to work on the flap. We need one extra flap for the other side. And then we're gonna put it all together. So what I have here for the extra flap the piece that I have is six and a half by 10. Okay, the same as your bag. You're gonna put it together, right? You're gonna put it together. And I'm gonna round two of the corners, the bottom corners, I'm gonna round it up. I'm gonna go here. And I'm gonna round it up like I did the other one, just slightly. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and render up. I'm going to go ahead, sew this all the way around, leave an opening here on the top to turn it inside out. And again, uh, it's half an inch seam allowance that we're working on, just in case you're wondering. Question? Yes. 
Uh, I think she missed the question about the panels. Like, how many bags can you make with one panel? I've used two panels, which one for for this bag here, because I fussy cut the sewing machines, and only one sewing machine comes in one panel. Uh, this one here, the panel, I only took two squares of the panel, so the panel I still have a really big piece left that I can use other things. I can even add pockets or other things to the bag if I really wanted to. Alright, let's... Somebody says, Adam, tell your mom she rocks. <laughs> Thank you. All right, let's... What do you guys think of this idea of uh, having two bags in one? Question? Yes? Uh, Gina, can you show how to put in the magnetic strap, snap? Magnetic snap? Oh, magnetic uh, snaps, yeah. Yeah, they're not hard. I think we've done that in other videos, but I guess I can show you that. Okay, let's see. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and trim my corners here. And anything that's a curve, either use pinking shears. I'm going to actually trim a little bit of my seam allowance because it's slightly big. And then curves, always cut it a little bit and eliminate. Because when you turn your, your project to the right side, they turn a lot nicer on the curve. Because what, ha what, what you're doing is you're expanding this like this. So because this is a curve, when you're expanding it, you end up with a nicer uh, inside fabric inside a uh, line like line on the outside of your project okay do a couple here on my curve or you can use pinking shears and then you can eliminate this you don't even have to do this all right i'm gonna put this to the right side and I'm going to show you how to put all the pieces together. Because this now we're just putting it together. Just to answer your question from before, um, a bunch of people are saying they love the bag. Uh, Carrie says, genius idea. Um, Dawn says she loves the two bags in one idea and she loves the fabric. Karen says she's going to give it a try. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I need to find the middle of my front. So I'm going to put seam and seam together here. And I'm going to go ahead here and put a pin to my middle. So my middle is about there. So I'm going to go about, about three inches down. And of course, the my marking pen that I have here is blocked, so I'm not going to be able to see it. So first, before you do this, go ahead, press it really nicely, and do your top stitch, okay? Because right now, as you see, this is still not fairly even. Until I actually press it and do a top stitch, it will look a lot nicer. But I'm just going to show you how you attach everything. Also, this one here, you're going to press it. Also do a top stitch, but don't close your inside until you add your magnetic snap. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a, in a little bit. This one also, we're going to need to uh, add the magnetic snap and they should more or less look the same. Like if I put this one in here, it should look almost like the same. So you're probably wondering why I need to do with these. Okay, so we're going to go ahead here and we're going to measure about three inches down. Question? Yes. Will the video be available later? Yes, it will. The video will be on YouTube. So I'm actually going to do about four inches. Okay? So I'm going to go four inches down from the pin that I marked. I'm going to go four inches down. And I'm going to go ahead. I can't see too much. I see a little bit, but not a lot, a lot. This is black, so I'm black. So um, 
let's see my middle of my panel is ten and a half so I go five and right there okay that's my middle here and I went about four inches down so now I'm gonna get my bag here after it's pressed and I top stitch this part I'm gonna go ahead and do this I'm gonna draw a line so this is my middle so I would go ahead and draw a line across here that's the four Question. inches down yeah Carrie says do you need another assistant to press for you <laughs> yeah I sure I sure do so this is center in the middle okay and you're gonna go ahead and Put that right on that line that you just did the four inches like this and I'm just right now I'm just gonna go put, put pins so you can see what it looks like so I'm gonna go ahead here and see my bag is upside down that's my question yes from Jackie are we allowed to make and sell go ahead have fun make lots of money I don't have a problem with you guys selling it I think I've mentioned that before So, um, so center that into the middle, go four inches down, and then you're going to go ahead and sew a seam there. Make sure when you do your seam, you're not catching this part of your bag, this opening of the bag. It should be just across the flap there, because this is going to go like this. All right. Then you're going to get your other flap. You're going to go here and you put right beside that one. And I'm just going to go ahead and put it with pins again. And you're going to sew, put the magnetic snap first though. Okay, before you sew that. What I did on mine when I was doing that one. What I did is, I put my flap here, right here. I sew a little bit, sew a little bit. And I know I had my opening here in the middle. I made my, did my magnetic snap here. Then I went here, see where I needed to put it on. And after I put it on here, that's when I sewed the rest of it because I wanted to make sure it, they would match exactly. And sometimes just measuring, sometimes depending if you seam allowance or if we sew a little quicker, sometimes it doesn't work. So you wanted to make sure if you do it that way, you know, always going to work, right? Because the magnetic snap that you put here has to work with this flap and also has to work with this flap. Question. Just kind of kind of a follow-up to the last one uh, what price would you put on such a bag if you were to sell it um, that's a tough question because uh, it's all depend which fabrics are you using uh, how much time of your time are you using to make your uh, your bag so it, it's entirely up to you I always tell you guys and I tell all my customers don't undersell your stuff don't go and say, oh, I got the fabric really cheap, so I can sell it for this price. Because you have to think the next time when you make uh, another project and you want to sell it, if it, or a customer, you, you made the bag, sold it, and then out of the blue, they tell you, oh, can you make me another one? Oh, but if you can't find the fabric at the same price, if you don't have any more of the fabric, you know, you're paying full price of the fabric, and you sold that fabric for next to nothing. You don't want that. So you definitely want to be fair. Make sure you make some money. And plus, by doing that, you're telling them that, you know, your time is not worth very much. You're selling them too cheap. They're going to think, oh, you know, you know, they just whip this together really fast. And it's not like that. You take your time. You, you have to collect fabric or go buy fabric. You have to, you know, get the project, sew it. Then you have sometimes to pay for tables to go there and sell that product. That's all cost money. So you have to always take all of that in consideration. And, and sometimes by selling something really cheap, you're not just hurting yourself, you're hurting everybody else that's trying to make a living by making something to sell. Because one person sells really cheap, no one wants to pay what the product is really worth. I hope that helped. Okay, so you can sew your straps on just like that afterwards. And let me see what I have here. Um, 
my other hardware. And what I have here also is my little clips that I have here that I would attach here. But I probably would attach sew these on before I actually attach it to my main bag. Okay, so you would go there and attach those there. I'm just going to put it with a pin for now. Because I'm sure you guys can all do that. And I'm going to go ahead and put with a pin also there. Oh, I was putting it upside down. <laughs> right there, about halfway in. Measure them. Make sure they are the same. They are at the same level. And that's done. Uh, question? Yeah? Uh, I'm curious to how many fabrics are used in the first bag. I think I see four. Is that right? Yes. I used four in my first bag. I used the button fabric. I've used uh, a different lining. And then I used the panel. Um, yeah, I like mixing a lot of stuff. And there you go. This is what this one would look like on this side. Again, in here, also, if you don't want to do a magnetic snap, you can do just those plastic snaps or even a button. You can add a little thing here with for a button and do the same on this one. And probably will be a lot easier. You can even do, if you just add the little piece of fabric here uh, to add um, your button, then uh, you don't have to worry about where you're going to sew the button because afterwards you can close everything and you know it's going to work. So that's what it looks like. That's another idea. And you guys wanted to know uh, the magnetic snaps. Let me see if I have some here that I can show you how to add one. Do I have any left? Yes. So I really think there's a lot of videos out there on how to put these in. I probably don't do it any different than anybody else. But uh, so I have one here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the small bag. I don't want to, and I'm just going to add it to this flap first. So I'm going to take this one out for now just to add that, that one there. And so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to find my middle because I want that to be right in the middle of my bag. So, and I would do about a one inch up, maybe about one inch up. And I'm going to mark that middle there. And I think one inch up is good. So I'm going to, will be around here. Of course, on the other side, this, it's going to go on that side. So I'm going to mark it here. And I'm going to go from my inside here. Just a comment from Catherine. Yeah. Hello, Gina. This is my first time watching you live. I love your tutorial. Well, thank you very much, Catherine. And uh, Carrie also says, thank you, Gina. Uh, Agnes says she loves the bag and loves the colors. Yeah. Oh, and Lewis says, people sometimes don't appreciate the effort you put into making bags. Well, I try to bring you guys things that you guys can use and, um, and you know, they're slightly different. I mean, I mean, there's going to be always bags. There's always going to be something that's going to be similar to what you make. Um, because what is a bag? You, it's two pieces of fabric. You sew a couple lines, you add pockets. It, it's sometimes the little details that you add to it that makes the difference on the bag. So what I'm going to do here is just going to mark it. So the magnetic snap brings this little piece. So you're going to go ahead and mark it. And with the seam ripper, that I don't see one here because I didn't put one here on my table. Question? Yes? Serena asks, is the fabric available online? Yes, the, the fabric is available on the website. We will add the link to the bottom. So you guys can have a look. There's already links to the three of the fabrics. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make a little hole here and here. And then you get one of them, either one or the other. 
Uh, another You're question. gonna slide it through. Yes. Another question from Lewis. He says, "How about Velcro instead of a snap?" You could. You could also use Velcro. It's like I said. Just because I do it like this doesn't mean it can be done differently. You can, you know, use your own ideas. I mean, I'm sure you guys have great ideas. Um, let me see. Need scissors. Okay, let's get some scissors. So. In the back here, I always like to add either a little piece of, um, you know, Peltex or even another piece of fabric into the back just to make that part a little stronger. So, and I would do the same thing. I would mark it there, make two little holes. And so, cut it through. And we're going to put it through here. Just to make it stronger, because sometimes by opening and closing the bag, it can create you a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and put that. Then you get your little piece that you have. You put it there, and then you just fold it, either in or out. It doesn't matter. Like that, on top of each other, or you can fold it out. This one was actually quite hard to fold. Some of them are a little bit softer, some are a little harder. And there you go, that part is done. The other part here, this one, you do the same thing. So I would go here, figure out where I want it now. So I would put it here, put it on top. Sometimes if you have um, like a, a chuck, if you mark the button with chuck here, like cover the button with a little bit of white chuck, when you put it down, already leaves a mark, and what you can do, and then do that there. The same thing that I did to the other one, right? So, I'm just now, for now, I'm just gonna leave it the way I had it before, so you guys can see what it looks like. And um, we're gonna say goodnight to everyone, because uh, I don't wanna bore, for you guys with more details, I think I cover all the steps of this bag that you guys can definitely do. And uh, if you guys have any questions, I will do my best to answer them. And that's like that. So now, if I want to close it. Of course I have pins, so this could be a little bit hard to close with all these pins. But let's have a look. So you would go, go, no, straps first. Fold and fold. Fold a little bit, just slightly. Question? Yes? Uh, Gina, have you put the leather labels on your site? I checked the other day and didn't see them. Yeah, I didn't have very much time this week to put that much online. I only put a couple fabrics. Um, I will do my best to put it this week. I started all my classes this week and um, had a few issues uh, here and there. There's always when you start new things. Things sometimes uh, don't go as smooth as you expected, and then you have to cover a lot of other areas. But I will do my best to to put it this week, so you guys can have a, can get them if you want. Okay, and then that's like that. And I will be putting a leather label, and there you go. Hope you guys use this project i think this is a neat project so you guys can go shopping and you know always have that extra bag that you're never gonna leave home because i know me i have all the intentions to take all my bags when i go even grocery shops or i just go pick up something really quick and then i forget to put the bags in the car by the time i get to the store it's like oh forgot my bag don't have a bag like this i definitely have a bag you know so it's right in there i can just open it and use it still have my small bag for my purse on the outside and I definitely have a bag that I can use and fit quite a few things so guys good night thank you for watching it was really fun I like to interact with you guys uh, you know just not just by comments sometimes online or here and there so it's always nice to know uh, a little bit about you guys um, so I hope you guys make the bag, take pictures, send it to me to the, to the new, um, to the new Facebook page that I have. It's called Albie Sewing. 
the arts and crafts eventually will be deleted so if you guys have not um, you know liked go there and you can definitely uh, contact me even through there um, and I hope this is a project that everybody will enjoy good night everyone